24 hours from kickoff. Who's going to play? Who's not going to play from the 22 class? Freshmen who will be involved not only tomorrow against South Dakota State, but moving forward throughout the season. And who will take a red shirt? We'll talk about it in a moment. But first, want to thank our sponsor, Ascent Nutrition. For you guys out there that drink coffee, and I know a lot of you do, perks you up in the morning. This stuff is mold and mycotoxin free. Don't harm your body with the name brand coffees that oftentimes contain traces of mold and mycotoxins. Ascent Coffee, visit GoAscentNutrition.com. Again, that's GoAscentNutrition.com. If you use the code there on the screen, that's the code Hawkeyes, you'll get 15% off your order. 15% off your order from Ascent Nutrition. Also, if you're heading over to FryFest, check out Under the Kitchen, Randy Engel at his booth there at FryFest, and all of his work by visiting Under the Kitchen on Facebook. Great Hawkeye Prince, Tavian Banks, Spencer Lee, uh, go down the line, Arlen Bruce, and more on the way from the great artist that is Randy Engel at Under the Kitchen. So we always are interested in knowing which true freshmen will play, which true freshmen will sit, which ones will take advantage of the four-game rule. You know, if a freshman can now play, anybody can play four games, and as long as they have that eligibility, uh, they haven't burned their red shirt already, they can actually take that year as a red shirt season. Now, uh, I've talked about it. I'm in agreement with Coach Don Patterson, who has went on the record and said that uh, red shirting is pretty much overrated now. Most players don't stick with the school throughout uh, five years anyways. In fact, a very small percentage of them do, especially scholarship guys. And so, you know, do you redshirt a guy who's uh, probably going to leave in three years for the draft? I, I don't think so, uh, barring some injury. So let's take a look at Iowa's 22 class. I'm going to run through who I believe will play right away and who will redshirt. We'll start with the red shirts, and I'll add in a couple guys that I do think have a chance to play four games, get into action, and certainly any of them could by necessity. Injury comes up with starters and backups, and perhaps somebody gets called on, at least for special teams duties. Uh, but for the most part, this is a list of the guys I believe will take a red shirt and use this year for development. Jaden Montgomery. Linebacker Jade Montgomery, Iowa, very deep uh, at that position. He's a kid who was uh, committed for quite a while in the 22 class, one of the earlier commits. I believe he will take a red shirt. Carson May, another guy from Oklahoma, uh, four star quarterback who, and a lot of hype around him. He's a bigger guy at six foot four, six foot five, not dual threat, but has a good arm. And again, a four star guy to come out of high school, barring some ridiculous string of injuries in that quarterback room or COVID issues. Uh, Carson May will. Uh, sit out this year. Caden Crawford, uh, another guy who uh, at some point will factor in, you'd think, uh, on the defensive line, but not this year. They're far too deep there. I think Caden Crawford needs to develop the body. He's your typical defensive end as far as a a physical stature, but he's got to get bigger, and certainly uh, uh, he'll get a chance next summer to, uh, next spring and summer, to develop those skills and get bigger. Cohen and Tringer, we know he was a flip from uh, Central Michigan at defensive back, I think more of a safety Again, they're very deep there. Um, I, I don't really know how, what quality of depth you have after maybe the top two or three at free and strong safety. Is Entringer a guy who could eventually compete at the cash spot? That's a question mark. Cooper DeGene, this is his first year playing the cash. I expect him to play that that role all year long. I know he's listed as a backup corner, but Entringer, uh, it would. I, I think he'll be hard pressed to find the field this year. I would expect them to uh, redshirt Cohen and Tringer. Kale Vanderbush, Plainfield, Indiana tight end, built more like a wide receiver right now with probably about the speed. Um, he's going to have to get bigger. He's not like his counterpart, Addison Nestringa, who we'll talk about in a moment. Really good hands, so you never know. You never say never, especially with Iowa's struggles uh, keeping wide receivers healthy so far this uh, during fall. But I would expect Kale Vanderbush to take a red shirt. Deshaun Lee was the only guy that committed after the early enrollment ended. He was the only guy that signed during the regular period. I expect Deshaun Lee, Michigan native, to take a red shirt. Kale Crow, really nice kid. Comes from a really nice family down here near Ames, actually, the Huxley area. I expect Kale to uh, take a red shirt as well. Saw him in action a bit at guard, which surprised me. He's a, what I'd call a prototypical tackle. He was playing some guard during uh, Iowa's a kids day scrimmage. I would expect kale to take a red shirt. Jack Dotzler, same boat for him. Wisconsin native big, um, you know, left tackle or right tackle, certainly a tackle at six, seven, six, eight built like one. At least I would expect Jack to take a year and, 
know, you look at Caden Proctor and uh, Trevor Lauk and some of the depth, even though the question marks surrounding David David Cobb, they've still recruited really well here um, along that offensive line, especially at tackle over the last few seasons. How about Landon Van Kekerex, guy who we've not talked about much uh, at Iowa? You know, he's a guy that I could see playing a variety of positions at Iowa. I think he's listed right now as a linebacker, but um, he was recruited as an athlete. I believe he was the uh, one of the last ads of the class. He committed on signing day. He'll take a red shirt. But these are the types of guys, they come out of nowhere, and all of a sudden they become impact players either on special teams or even on defense or offense. A guy like Van Kekerix, or Van Kekerix, I believe is how it's pronounced, um, expect him to take a red shirt, but you never know. He could have a, a really bright future in-state kid. Those are always uh, really cool stories. All right, let's talk about guys who will play four games. Brian Allen Jr. is a guy I could see getting into the mix. The problem for Brian Allen Jr., he did enroll early. He's a four-star um, defensive tackle. Excuse me, defensive end. I think he's more of a defensive end. Um, the, the problem for Brian Allen is just the depth in front of him. I think that I was going to go probably 10 or 11 deep without Brian Allen. And even though he looks the part physically, he looks ready to compete. And again, enrolling early certainly helps the cause. I wouldn't expect to see him uh, real early, but I could see him getting in on special teams. Ideally, here's a kid who you could say, yeah, let's let's see if we can work him in for four games, whether that be on special teams or an actual uh, live game action, um, offense, defense type action. Um, I would still expect Brian Allen to uh, take a red shirt, whether that means he plays four games or not. And I'm going to flip this one. This is one that I went back and forth as we were, or as I was prepping for this segment. Addison Estringa, I've got him uh, actually playing all 12 games, all 12 regular season games. That doesn't mean he's actually going to get in every game, but in other words, they're going to burn the red shirt. I, I went back and forth on this. I could see him only playing three, four games. My big question is who's tied in three? Is it Steven Stelianos from Lafayette? Addison Estringa looked really good at the open scrimmage. I still have a hard time seeing Iowa playing a true freshman at tight end very much when you have Lachey and Laporta already, but injuries happen. Um, we also know that uh, Johnny Pascuzzi, who's a walk-on, has received high praise from Kirk. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. This is my 50-50 pick, folks. I'm gonna say Addison Estringa burns the red shirt because of the fact that I believe red shirting is overrated, and I would assume that the coaching staff kind of understands that because I think Estringa, uh, he's much more put together than a Kale Vanderbush, at least ready to play Big Ten football physically at this point in his young career. I'll take Addison Estringa to burn the red shirt. Jacob Bostic, I think he'll burn the red shirt. Had Iowa kept Charlie Jones, Tyrone Tracy, if uh, Keegan Johnson were healthier, if Nico Reganey were healthier, if Deontay Vines hadn't went down, Brody Brecht hadn't went down at one point, maybe not, but I think they need Bostic. Um, will he play a lot on offense? That's yet to be determined. Alec Wick, Jack Johnson listed up in front of him right now on the depth chart, but I've got Bostic, who's your prototypical X-type receiver, playing more than four games and burning the red shirt. Jazzy and Patterson at running back. I expect him to burn the red shirt. He looked really good at kids day. And I go back to depth. I just don't think I was real deep at running back. You have one or two guys go down and then Patterson has to play. They've got five guys right now on scholarship at running back. And I thought Jazzy and Patterson looked the part at the open scrimmage. And it's not as hard to play as a true freshman at running back. And I always had some attrition at that position. So why not play your young guys early if you have any, any level of confidence in them? Caleb Johnson, he will play and he'll burn his red shirt. I think we're going to see him a lot more than maybe a lot of people think. I know he didn't show up on the two deep that was released to the, the uh, public. I think you're going to see Caleb Johnson a lot tomorrow. All right. That's my early prediction. I think you're going to see him a lot. And I think you're going to see him a lot throughout the season. He's just too good to keep off the field at this point. I think he burns the red shirt and plays all season. TJ Hall will work his way in as well. Another guy that, that Kirk Ferentz said to me, uh, personally, I had a short discussion with Kirk at Media Day. He was just very high on, on TJ Hall. I expect Hall to play throughout the season, burn that red shirt. How much does he actually get time on defense? I don't know. He's really rangy um, at 6'1 as a cornerback. But I think he's versatile, and I could see him working into special teams and being a real help on special teams. He's a smart kid, very mild-mannered kid. We had him on the show, uh, I believe, back in January. So I expect TJ Hall to play where exactly his freshman year is, is yet to be determined, but he will play. Aaron Graves is going to play deep position, but that just shows you how tough, how good Aaron Graves is going to be. 
He looks the part already. He does not look like a true freshman. Looks like a senior defensive lineman. I mean, this kid is going to be awesome at Iowa. And I don't often say that on this show. He's going to be really good. He's too good to keep off the field, even if Iowa is 10 deep at his position or along that defensive line. Will he play more on the inside? Will he play more on the outside? Probably more inside his freshman year, although I could see him following a similar trajectory to an A.J. Epinesa. And then as he progresses in his run-stopping ability, uh, sliding outside and and being that edge rusher that Iowa fans uh, enjoy watching. And boy, wouldn't that be a tandem in a year or two with Graves and Lucas Van Ness? And then finally, Iowa's five-star Xavier Wampa is going to play. Not listed on the two deep, uh, but he is going to play. And here's the thing with Wampa. Could he end up being a guy who helps on special teams? Absolutely. Could he be a guy who ends up helping at cash? Absolutely. Could he be a guy that helps at one of the safety spots? Absolutely. He's athletic enough. I think he's smart enough that Iowa can plug him and play him wherever need be. He's kind of similar in my mind to a Cooper DeGene. Totally different types of players from a physical standpoint. DeGene, great athlete, but he's maybe six foot tall. I think Xavier Wampa is closer to 6'1", 6'2". Uh, probably a bit more just natural in his athleticism, but the gene's quite an athlete as well. Both those guys, unique skill sets. And I think versatile guys that Phil Parker can tinker with on the back end, but he'll play at least on defense um, as a gunner and he'll play a lot. There's no reason to redshirt him. If if he pans out, like we expect him to as a five-star recruit, he ain't going to be here for five years anyways. And let me add this one in drew Stevens will burn the red shirt. Now drew Stevens, not a scholarship player. He's a walk on. I think he'll eventually earn a scholarship. I think he's going to take care of kickoffs. He's got a bigger leg. I think he's clearly got the bigger leg. So he'll he'll take care of kickoffs. I'm pretty confident of that. And then uh, we'll see if he can win the kicking duties um, with Aaron Blom. Those guys both both listed on the depth chart. Uh, Drew Stevens not listed as the uh, first stringer, but he was the only true freshman listed on the depth chart. So quite an accomplishment for uh, Augusta native uh, Drew Stevens. Appreciate you tuning in for another edition of the show. In just about 24 hours, it's Iowa South Dakota State, and of course, Iowa football post game with Coach Don Patterson following the game. Yes, myself and Coach Patterson following Iowa South Dakota State right here from the Hawkeye of the Storm.